Long ago in a small village, a woodcarver named Geppetto made a wooden puppet. It looked so much like a real boy that Geppetto gave it a name, Pinocchio. The old man was so happy, he showed the puppet to his cat Figaro and his goldfish Cleo. As Geppetto showed his puppet to his dear pets, a small cricket named Jiminy Cricket snuck into Geppetto's house to have a warm night's sleep. Jiminy Cricket watched as Geppetto set the puppet down and gazed out the window at the stars. Look at that! The wishing star! Geppetto cried. Geppetto wished Pinocchio was a real boy. Soon it was bedtime and Geppetto, Figaro, Cleo and Jiminy Cricket all fell asleep. Before long, a beautiful light filled the workshop and woke up Jiminy Cricket. It was the Blue Fairy. She had heard Geppetto's wish and was there to make Pinocchio a real boy. She touched the puppet with her magic wand and Pinocchio came to life. But Pinocchio had to prove he was brave, truthful, and unselfish to become a real boy. The Blue Fairy knew Pinocchio would need help, so she made Jiminy Cricket his helper, so he would help him to choose between right and wrong and prove himself. Geppetto was delighted with Pinocchio, and he sent him off to school like a good parent. On the way to school, Pinocchio met a sly fox, who said Pinocchio could make a lot of money and didn't have to go to school. Jiminy Cricket didn't trust the sly fox. The sly fox said he could spend all of his time having fun in the theater instead of studying at school. Pinocchio said, okay, and off he went with the sly fox to the theater owner. That night, the theater owner put Pinocchio on stage. He was a big hit as he sang and danced for the crowd. The crowd threw money on the stage. Jiminy Cricket, who was in the crowd, worried. After the show, the theater owner locked Pinocchio up and said, you will live here and make me lots of money. Pinocchio and Jiminy Cricket wondered how he could escape. Luckily, the Blue Fairy arrived. She asked Pinocchio why he missed school. He lied. She asked him more questions, and each time he told a lie, his nose grew longer and longer. The Blue Fairy reminded him to tell the truth if he wanted to be a real boy. Pinocchio promised he would tell the truth. She fixed his nose and set him free. The next day, Pinocchio met the Sly Fox again. The Sly Fox convinced Pinocchio to not go to school, but instead play and have fun all day. Pinocchio followed the fox, not returning home after regular school time. Geppetto was worried and went to look for Pinocchio. Geppetto sailed his boat to search for Pinocchio and he was swallowed up by a huge whale. When Pinocchio returned home from playing all day, he found this out and he knew he must save Geppetto. Pinocchio and Jiminy Cricket found the huge whale and they teased him with a fish. The whale grabbed the fish, the pole, Pinocchio and Jiminy Cricket and they were all swallowed into his belly. They found Geppetto in the whale's belly too. They must find a way to escape from the whale. They decided they would make the whale sneeze and they would all escape when the whale opened his mouth. It worked, but when the whale saw them in the water, he thrashed around, knocking everyone about. Pinocchio had to grab Geppetto to save him. After a while, the water settled down and Geppetto and Jiminy Cricket awoke on the beach. They found Pinocchio lying lifeless on the rocks. Geppetto was heartbroken and he carried his son home in his arms, convinced he had lost Pinocchio forever. Back in the workshop, Geppetto and Jiminy Cricket cried and then all of a sudden, the Blue Fairy appeared. She touched her wand on Pinocchio and said, Awake! Pinocchio awoke and the Blue Fairy said, 
By saving Geppetto, you have proven yourself to be brave, truthful, and unselfish. I am a real boy, shouted Pinocchio. Pinocchio, Geppetto, Jiminy Cricket, and all the pets celebrated and danced as Geppetto's wish had come true. Pinocchio was a real boy.